This is the guts of a Simpson Model 460 Series 3 um, bench multimeter that I acquired today. And fairly typical for a late 1970s uh, decent quality bench meter. There's a, a crap ton of miscellaneous uh, operational amplifiers like um, SA1458, LM308 there, LM741, LM41, LM416 yeah, that I think is probably an operational amplifier, some other kind of analog chip, uh, more another LM308 and uh, SA1458 there. This chip, uh, Simpson House Mark, that is just the um, analog digital converter uh, ASIC that also has the various um, display driver stuff or display um, output stuff, uh, multiplexing and whatnot. Although the actual display driving is handled by this array of transistors. So it's fairly typical to a lot of these things except this one um, outputs individual segment controls instead of um, BCD that's decoded by something like a, um, a 7447 or similar IC. There's a resistor network there. Uh, L7635, uh, 103G, 10,000 ohm. Oh, that, that, that's probably the base drive, so yeah, that would be fairly high. A bunch of trim pots and trim caps for the various uh, level adjustments. There's that heat sink on that transistor there. Uh, might be providing some kind of regulation or something. There's a um, LM340T-5 that's providing the 5-volt supply for the um, ASIC and the displays and crap of that nature. Then there's the uh, tool ripple suppression capacitor for the positive and negative, probably 15-volt or some similar p potential rail. I see a mains input. Warning, blah, 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 you will die if you touch this, blah, 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 dirt's mains. Main input fuse and uh, this pair of wires running over to the power switch on the front cover and that means that the thing is primary side switched because some of these things are secondary side for whatever reason <coughs> and one interesting feature about this meter is that in addition to, liquid, to the um, not liquid crystal um, the uh, light emitting diode display it also has a meter that says where in the 0 to 199 times 10 to the n whatever um, range it is. So that gives a, um, a view of fast changing analog signals that just cause gibberish on a digital <coughs> readout. Now one thing about this is that the, uh, the D, at least the DC potential range seem to be acting weird and acting and is acting like resistance. I think that's probably just contacts in the switches so I'm probably just going to hit some of that with a contact cleaner. And some of them can be a bit, um, like, that one, uh, be a bit slow to engage, but that's kind of normal on something of this old. Yeah. <coughs> and, of course, different, um, banana jack inputs for standard clip leads. And, wow, this is just a, a assortment that I got from, um, James Co. Uh, no, a DigiKey, it's, uh, that. Pretty much standard clip leads just in the crap ton of different colors, which is useful when you have bubbles of the things on an experiment. And then um, one mildly annoying thing is that the what's probably the AC section is encased in this uh, can that's soldered to the board. That's somewhat annoying. It isn't lift off. It isn't screw removable the way it is in the. Uh, Keith Lee and uh, Hewlett Packard ones that I've uh, looked in. Although, of course, big thumbs up for all, except for the ASIC, but then again, probably when the thing was made, there weren't standard DMM chips. Or well, they're very expensive. Uh, they're all just standard ICs that, for ease of repairability and whatnot, so uh, Hewlett Packard, take note. <laughs>